So I guess uh, thank you to Karen Council today for uh, leading the forum on uh, both uh, dealing with COVID fatigue plus uh, Quaker jokes. Uh, so that is our two topics today. Um, so yeah, anyway, go ahead. And get okay. Started. Well, welcome everybody. Um, we are aware that um, at any time during our lives, it's very important for us to take care of all of our various healths, our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health, but it certainly has been a time of um, confusion and upheaval and stress uh, for, for folks. And we're just wanting people to share with each other how we are, uh, the practices that we have put in place or tried to put in place that would help us uh, keep, to, keep optimistic and hopeful. Uh, and in touch with the people that we love and so on. So we want to share those stories. And uh, of course, it's a very well known that humor is a wonderful way of dealing with anything. Uh, so we also want to share whatever jokes that we have available to us, Quaker if possible, but I think those are somewhat limited. <laughs> um, so any anything funny, amusing, jokey that you have to share would be most welcome. Well, I, I collected some Quaker jokes that I can share with you if uh, you wish. Great. Shall I, shall I share the screen? Uh, Steve, you're muted. Uh, aren't they the type you can read to us? Or they yeah, it would them. be nicer if you tell them. Uh, well, they're actually fairly visual. Oh, okay. I see. Sure. Cartoons? And, and the, uh, the host has disabled uh, screen sharing. Yeah. I'll fix you up. Just a minute. There you go. Can you screen share now? There you go. Uh, I thought this one on the left might be a good way to start. I have this constant sense of impending Zoom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a query. Uh, consider that you might be muted. <laughs> And then I like this uh, this Christmas tree. Uh, people, I noticed people are putting up Christmas decorations already, and I thought, oh, this would be nice for this year. Our, my cats would like it. <laughs> Larry, Larry, the one on the uh, consider you might be muted might also say consider that you might not be muted. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so negative. I, I, well, you're right. <laughs> and then... Uh, then we have over here uh, the music of silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I liked uh, this testimony on the right. <laughs> and here we have the last, last Thanksgiving. I don't know if you can read it. No. But uh, this woman is lactose intolerant. Uh, this woman is vegetarian. <laughs> this man is vegan. Uh, this man is uh, macrobiotic. Uh, this one, the fanatic traditionalist. <clears throat> and uh, this one is on a cleanse, so she can't eat. And uh, I, this one is strictly, um, uh, strictly Raw diet, I think, is was what it was. Uh, this one's a, a gourmet and very picky about it. This one's allergic to gluten, so this is their last Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and here we have a, a novel idea for drying clothes. <laughs> radi radically civilly disobedient solar powered laundry drying apparatus. <clears throat> very good. And this is what happened when I was asked to bring a, a veggie tray over here. 
for a potluck. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Stranger lectured me about giving money to a homeless man, saying that he's only going to spend it on drugs and alcohol. And I said, yeah, like I wasn't. <clears throat> And then here's Will, Where's Waldo and the era of social distancing. <laughs> and here are the Beatles in the era of social distancing. Oh, I see. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and if you like, I can play a you a video of conferencing in the modern day. Sure. You're on a roll. We just had the most amazing oh, apparently presentation. I'm playing you a commercial as well. Uh, you have to stop sharing the other one first, Larry. Uh, what? I think you need to stop sharing your Word document first. Stop, stop sharing what? I'm still seeing your jokes on my screen. You have to stop sharing that first before you start another one. Oh, okay. There we go, and then back to this one. So what I'd really like to stop sharing is this commercial, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know how to do that. Skip ah, ads. Skip ads. There we go. Trip Crosby has joined the meeting. has joined the meeting. Hello? Tyler? No, this is Beth from ICF. Oh, hey, Beth. Okay. How are you doing? Uh, oh, good. Yeah. Just making a meeting. Tyler? Has joined the meeting. All right, well, uh, this is Trip. Who's here? Tyler's here. That's here. Okay, the purpose of today's meeting is to discuss the. Yeah, I'll be able to do it in like 30 minutes. John has joined the meeting. Hi, John. Hi. I was just trying to go over the purpose of today's meeting, which is to discuss the deliver. Tyler has joined the meeting. <laughs> Sorry, I got cut off. <laughs> Paul here? I said I'm the invite. Computer access code. No, 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 that's your PIN number. It should be a nine digit number. Try pressing the pound key. Paul. Has joined the meeting. Any questions before we move on? Yes, this is Beth. What's our best plan of attack for the second quarter? Question I think what we should do. Oh, you go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, well, I think well, what we should do. It actually really depends on five. how you look at yeah, it because it really comes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think what we, we really, I think Let me just say that. <laughs> Great graph, John. Uh, Tyler? Well, my main concern with the projections from this year was that they're just insufficient. I mean, they're not even taking into account. We <laughs> Tyler <laughs> again. Hello? John, are you guys taking distributions? John? Oh, my bad. I was on mute. Um, let me let me start over. So it's I a little it long. I'm sharing it. Yep. You. you should be able to see it on your screen right now. Got it. I don't see a link anywhere. It says in your download of plugins. We are all using. I Mac. think that's the point. How can you? Um, Finances are looking great. Paul, do you have any comments on staffing? I was. Oh, we get a few more contractors. <laughs> I just want to go over a couple of details as we move into our next section here. Um, we got three new departments coming on the board. We'll break it up a little bit, yes. By the end of the <laughs> So I need everyone to give me detailed evaluations each Sorry, month so that we know. That's it, guys. Beth, you'll send out a recap email that could have basically taken the place of this whole meeting, correct? Yep, always do. Well, thanks for doing that, Beth. Hey, you've been here the whole time? Yeah. Huh. Well, thanks, everyone, once again.
Oh, one more. Thing. <laughs> we are being censored. America's news outlets. Oh no! Get rid of that, that Larry. Quick. That's that's the we Epic Times ad. ad. Horrible. <laughs> So Larry, my, this means my entire daily life is a joke because I do nothing but these Zoom meetings for my work, so. Well, was it funny? It was yeah. funny. It's my life. All right. Well, I, I have a Quaker joke. I only have one Quaker joke. One it disappears, but. <laughs> uh, and, and it's fairly well known, so I'm going to tell it before somebody else names it. And uh, it comes from Doc Watson, uh, who uh, lived in uh, North Carolina. And North Carolina has plenty of Quakers and plenty of Baptists. So there were these sort of Baptist and Quaker jokes. And this is the best known one. Uh, once there, a Quaker farmer bought a, bought a cow from his Baptist neighbor. And uh, the first thing he tried to milk the cow uh, the mount, the the cow uh, gave a big kick and kicked over the Quaker, the stool, milk pail, and all. The Quaker calmly picked himself up from the straw and brushed himself off and said, "Nay, bossy, I shall not strike thee, but on the morrow I shall sell thee to a Baptist, and he'll beat the stuff out of thee." <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I have several Quaker jokes, if you're ready for them. What are the two, oh, this one's special for you, Terry. What are the two musical instruments that Quakers refuse to play? I don't know, Steve. What are the two musical instruments that Quakers refuses to play? Sax and violins. Oh. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a Quaker with a Jehovah's Witness? Someone who knocks on your door and says nothing for an hour. <laughs> Here's a serious query. If a Quaker is arrested, must she, he give up his right to silence? <laughs> okay, I'm, keep, I'm sticking to the short ones. Mm, I thought I had one more here. Oh, here's a good one. The children were asked in children's meeting, why do we keep quiet in meeting for worship? And one eager little girl answered, I know, I know. It's because everyone is sleeping. <laughs> now, uh, Terry's story about the cow, this is not a Quaker joke, but it is a true story. Uh, up here in Vermont, we have these uh, things called town meetings. Mm. And we have a town council that uh, meets every you know, selectman that meets every month or so. So, And recently, uh, the person who was the chair of the town selectman uh, retired as town selectman. He'd long been retired as a working person, but he retired. And so they had a special thing for him at the town meeting, you know, sort of commemorating this and dedicating the building of the town you know, the town clerk's office to this gentleman. And one of the people who was a, an attorney who'd been living in the area now for, I guess, about 15 years, told of the time that he came up and had to go and meet with this gentleman. So uh, he was told, you go here and here and here. And so he went there and his wife said, well, he's out in the barn milking the cows. So he went out to the barn and uh, the guy was there milking a cow and he stood behind the cow and he was about to start talking to the guy, to the, to the uh, town clerk and town clerk said, I suggest you move away from the back end of the cow over to the side. And so he did. 
And very shortly after that, the tau, cow raised its tail <laughs> and peed where the guy had been standing. <laughs> so he was very fortunate that he paid attention to this gentleman <laughs> who knew what cows do. Anyway, it was a very good story and everybody laughed their heads off. <laughs> I have a visual since we've had a few things. Doc Watson was involved and Steve had a joke here. Let me see if I can call it up here. Here it is. Let's see if I can share the screen. This kind of combines two of my favorite activities. So. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 uh, no disrespect to banjo players. Terry. Oh, no, none at all. <laughs> I'm going. To. I used to play a banjo, but I was not never very good at it. They were talking about me. Yeah, I have careful. a couple of jokes that are not necessarily Quaker jokes, but um, the first two are from my um, nephew, Christopher, when he was about four and his mom picked him up at daycare and um, she said, how was your day? And he said, oh, it was awesome. I saw geese flying over in military formation. <laughs> okay, that was one. And <laughs> then another time she um, asked him, Christopher, why don't you mind me the way you used to do? And he said, I don't know, maybe I'm losing my mind. <laughs> um, then this is a joke on me. Um, I have a tendency to criticize a certain wonderful person with whom I live, whom most of you know. And um, anyway, there, my cousin sent this picture, which I don't know how to put on the screen, um, of a woman. It's kind of awful, but it's funny because it's a joke about me. Um, and that is, there's a woman standing and looking at her husband, who is hanging dead from the ceiling. <laughs> he has a sign, like a note on, his, on the front of him. And... She says, you misspelled constant criticism. <laughs> I find that very, very funny. <laughs> um, and last one, I used to live on a farm in Ohio and the next door neighbors were old order German Baptist. And that's kind of like Amish. And um, before we were there, they farmed or Howard farmed with um, mules. And this particular 40 acres that was ours, he farmed because the people who were there before us didn't. And um, <clears throat> so this is a story about Howard. Uh, Howard, um, I'm going to say, did get kicked out of his church for buying a television. And ironically, his wife did not get kicked out, although she was allowed to sit in the living room and watch the TV. She wasn't allowed to touch it. Um, so Howard was um, in a transitional period between mules and tractors, and he had chosen to use the tractor to plow that particular day, and it got stuck in the mud. And he was um, lying on his back in the mud under the tractor trying to fix it. And the next door neighbor, you have to imagine a really tall guy with big bushy black eyebrows came over and stood there and said, Howard, why are you, why aren't you cussing a blue streak? And Howard said, I don't have to tell you what I'm thinking, do I? <laughs> so that's it. Well, I, I have an interdenominational joke, but it doesn't involve Quakers. Um, so, uh, the, the, this is a true story. Um, so a friend of mine, uh, my age, uh, grew up, uh, as the, uh, child of, uh, a Lutheran pastor and they lived in a little town in Iowa 
um, where there was also a Baptist church. By the way, Baptists aren't as frequent in the north as they are uh, here, but they lived in a little town in Iowa where there was a Baptist church, and it just so happened the churches and, and the parsonages were across the street from each other, okay? So um, the, the two pastors' families were friendly with each other, and one day uh, the uh, Lutheran uh, uh, pastor's wife asked the Baptist pastor's wife, how do you keep your lawn so green? You know, we just can't keep our lawn uh, green like you. And the Baptist pastor's wife said, well, you know, you believe in sprinkling, but we believe in total immersion. So anyway. That, that could be the punchline to every Baptist joke. I have a, I have a, a similar Quaker joke mm -hmm. about the, uh, the, the Quaker talking to his Baptist friend and the Baptist friend said, well, well what is it you, uh, you do at meeting anyway? And, and the Quaker said, well, why don't you come to meeting and see? So they, uh, the next Sunday, the Baptist and the Quaker went to meeting together, sat down with each other uh, side by side. And uh, there was a long period of silence. And the Baptist leaned over to the Quaker and says, well, when does the service begin? And the Quaker said, oh, not yet, not yet. So uh, the Baptist stepped back and waited another 15 minutes or so, and still there was silence and nothing happening. And he leaned, he, again, he leaned over to the Quaker and said, so, so does, does the service start soon? And the Quaker said, no, not, not yet, but soon, soon. So uh, half an hour went by, still more silence. And, Baptist says, is there going to be any service? And the, the uh, Quaker said, oh, oh, yes, it's coming soon. <laughs> and uh, finally, someone from worship and ministry got up and broke the meeting and, uh, and then uh, told everyone to go in peace. And the Quaker stood up and said to the Baptist, now the service begins. <clears throat> A weighty Quaker joke. Thank you, Mike. Well, I have a few COVID jokes. Oh, okay. This morning I saw a neighbor talking to her cat. It was obvious she thought her cat understood her. I came into my house, told my dog, we laughed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to myself. I'm having a parent-teacher conference. <laughs> Since we're all in quarantine, I guess we'll be making only inside jokes from now on. Oh, oink, 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 You get three oinks, four oinks. Right, right. Um, after years of wanting to thoroughly clean my house, but lacking the time, this week, I discovered that wasn't the problem. <laughs> <laughs> My mom always told me I wouldn't accomplish anything by lying in bed all day. But look at me now, Mom. I'm saving the world. <laughs> Good one. Uh, I do have another Quaker story. It's, uh, there was a, a, a Baptist pastor and uh, and a Quaker minister who were good friends, and uh, they, would, uh, they were discussing the differences in their religion one day. And the the Quaker says, "Well, we don't need a pastor because uh, the, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in the silence." And the pastor, the Baptist, says. Well, that's a little bigoted. What makes you think that I'm any less illuminated by the Holy Spirit when I write my sermon than you are sitting in meeting? Uh, and the Quaker agreed that that was quite right. He said, but what I worry about is what the devil does with that sermon between then and when you get to the pulpit. <laughs> I, have a, I have a Quaker insult. Okay. <laughs> He's such a weighty friend, it takes three people to hold him in the light. <laughs> <laughs> oink, 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 oink. Yeah. You get four. 
Well, continuing our theme of picking on Baptists, and we for, please forgive us all you Baptists, Jews don't recognize Jesus, Protestants don't recognize the Pope, Baptists don't recognize each other in a liquor store. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oink, oink, oink. <laughs> I've got a Quaker joke. Let's see. Uh, so let's see. Uh, a Catholic, a Jew, and a Quaker are stranded on a desert island, and they find the canonical old lamp buried in the sand. The Catholic rubs the lamp, and the canonical genie appears and asks him uh, for his one wish. The center of my faith is in St. Petersburg Square in Rome. I'd like to be taken there. Poof, he vanishes. The Jew takes up the lamp and rubs it, and the genie asks him for his single wish. My spiritual home is the Western Wall in Jerusalem. I want to be there. Poof, he also vanishes. The Quaker hesitantly rubs the lamp, and when the genie asks him his wish, he answers, gee, I'm a Quaker, and I don't really have a spiritual home. I'm really confused about what to, uh, what to wish for, and I think I need a clearness committee. Can you bring those other two guys back? Oink, <laughs> <laughs> oink, oink, oink. <laughs> well, I have a joke that doesn't involve Baptists. It was uh, two Quaker gentlemen on a train in New England, and they're you know, riding along, and they come to a pasture uh, with sheep in it. And one Quaker gentleman says to the other, well, look at that. There's a whole field of black sheep. And the other Quaker gentleman says, on this side. <laughs> that was my New England accent, by the way. At one point, I think that was attributed to Herbert Hoover. Yes, president, riding a train across the... <laughs> okay, that would make sense, yeah. Yeah, well, who was a Quaker after all? Yep. I have... There are many New England accents. The Vermont accent is quite distinct from the Massachusetts or Maine accents, for example. In Vermont, an old Vermonter would call it Vermont with a glottal stop at the end, no T. Hmm. Well, oh dear, I was, just, I was just about to tell another one and I, it slipped my mind, so maybe I'll come back. I have two versions of Quakers and light bulbs. Here's the short one. How many Quakers does it take to change a light bulb? It only takes one if it's done before the bulb burns out. After that, it can't be done because there's no way to hold the topic in the light. All right, that didn't grab you. Okay, here's one. Here's one that is oink, a, one oink for that one. <laughs> that. And here's another one that's probably a one oinker because it hits too close to home. How many Quakers does it take to change a light bulb? Thirty-three. One, to raise the concern at house and grounds that the light bulb is no longer working. Ten, to set up a light bulb replacement subgroup to send a report to monthly meeting. Three, to work on the subgroup and report to monthly meeting. Fifteen, at monthly meeting, to discern the right way forward is to change the light bulb. One, to report back to meeting the bulb is going to be changed. One person to actually change the bulb. One person to write an article for the newsletter about changing the bulb and one to write a letter to meeting saying the decision about changing the light bulb had not been done in right order. Oink, 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 oink. That gets five. <laughs> All too true. And, and the light bulb will get changed in about five years. <laughs> right. That, that reminds like me of my first uh, Quaker meeting, a 57th Street meeting in Chicago. And they invited people to uh, attend the House and Grounds meeting that evening. And I thought, well, there's a good chance to understand how Quakers uh, do business. And the, at that meeting, they spent the entire time 
for about three hours talking about whether or not to fix the uh, front gate and came to no consensus. Um, 15 years later, I went to Toronto on business and stopped uh, on the way back in, in Chicago. I stopped for the weekend and I went down to the 57th Street meeting and I found that they had removed the gate. <clears throat> there you go. So th this is also a true story. Uh, um, it's about Pauly Adams, uh, many of you will recall. Um, and Pauly, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, he's, he's, he uh, is gone now, but he uh, lived in Austin for many years and then finally moved <clears throat> back home to uh, Brooklyn uh, uh, for the final years of his life. And he used to uh, love to go into old bookstores and find things. And he would sometimes send me these packages with a book or two in it uh, that he thought I might find amusing. And, and the thing I always looked forward to more than the books was he would always inscribe them with some, some little, you know, thing that he would say about them. So he found a book, you know, you know, that there's that genre of books about how this group or that group changed the world, you know, kind of thing. So there was one called How the Quakers um, uh, Invented America, you know, and, and so uh, he, uh, so uh, I opened the book and he had inscribed it and he said, a more humble people would have simply been content to take credit for Hoover and Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. I don't know how many links to give that one. This is maybe, uh, I, this might take a while. This is less of a joke. It's more of a satire. It's on the, uh, in the, uh, how many Quakers does it change to change a light bulb? Uh, vein. Um, let's see. Uh, how many Quakers does it change uh, take to change a light bulb? That How many Quakers does it change to take a light bulb? That depends. If the light is in the meeting house, then it takes a whole meeting and three to nine months. First, property committee has to notify clerk that the light bulb is burned out. It will then be put on the agenda for the next monthly meeting for business. When it comes up on the agenda, clerk will ask how friends respond to the notice from the property committee. Then clerk of property committee will be asked for that committee's recommendation regarding the burned out light bulb. And we will learn that property committee has, was merely notifying the meeting of the state of the light bulb. And it did not reach the point of trying to make a recommendation. The matter will then be referred back to the property committee to come up with a recommendation regarding the bulb, and the matter will be put on the agenda for the next monthly meeting for business, four weeks later. At the next monthly meeting, property committee will report that it needs more time to make a recommendation because it is asked for consultation from other committees, and it has not yet received reports from those other committees. The Peace and Social Order Committee is reporting back regarding the relationship between the utility company and the armaments industry and the Pentagon and looking for a manufacturer of light bulbs that does not have such ties. Unity with Nature Committee is reporting uh, on the effects of the use of electricity on the environment and whether the old light bulb is biodegradable. And if not, is there any way to get rid of it that comports with our commitment to the environment? The Committee on Right Sharing of World's Resources has reported back that any additional use of light bulbs by the meeting flies in the face of our testimony of simplicity and recommends that the burned out light bulb be left in place as a reminder of all who must live without the benefit of electrical power. The matter is then put over to the next meeting for business. At the next meeting for business, all committees report there is no unity on a recommendation to change or not change the light bulb. Clerk schedules a threshing to take place in the interim before the next meeting for business, at which time it will be on the agenda again. At the next meeting for business, clerk discerns a sense of the meeting among friends and attenders that meeting should do the following. One, remove the burned out light bulb from the socket, but not dispose of it. It shall be kept on the mantle above the fireplace. Two, a new bulb provided one need not be purchased shall be placed into the socket, but not screwed in all the way so as not to use additional current. The decision as to when to screw the light bulb in all the way is referred back to the property committee, which will make its recommendation after input from all other committees previously involved at a future meeting for business. Three, if a new light bulb needs to be purchased, the matter will be referred to the finance committee to review and make a recommendation. After a period of silence, an old, well-respected Quaker scholar and weighty friend rises to quote from George Fox, stating that, it is not in thy power to change it. Thy task is to bring it to Christ and leave it there. 
In view of this, weighty friend must stand in the way. After another even longer period of silence, another friend rises to make the point that our willingness to proceed requires respect for Fox's writing, but must be tempered by the light received by meeting today. More silence. Clerk discerns that there is no sense of the meeting to proceed at this time and offers to lay the matter over for the next meeting for business. Weighty friends suggest that since so many of us did not grow up as Quakers, we might schedule an adult education series on the writing of George Fox on the inward light, thereby preparing meeting for its future possible consideration of when a, the new light bulb should be screwed into the socket. There is clearly strong unity on the, on the Fox series and clerk receives volunteers to arrange and schedule it. Weighty friend then agrees to stand aside. Meeting clerk then reads back the three points on which there has been unity and asks for a period of silence. The matter is minuted. Then another friend suggests that the matter be put over until the next monthly business meeting, uh, since it is our custom to put all, over all actions items for a month for seasoning. Friends agree and the matter is put over uh, to be reconsidered after seasoning. Anyway, it keeps going after that, but I <laughs> to stop there. Well. I don't know. I don't know how many oinks to give that, but I think I should probably refer it to the worship and ministry committee and not see how they might uh, forward it. <laughs> um, do, 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 do those of those of you who are here uh, about twenty years ago, I think um, uh, the uh, young friends did a skit um, in which they had actually, and, and some of you will remember this, they had uh, gone out and wired up. A, uh, a little board with a bunch of blinking lights that spelled out, tis the gift to be simple yeah. and blinked. Does, does anyone remember that? Yes, and, yes. And, and, uh, and they did a skit that's very similar to what James talked about. It was, you know, the skit was, it was business meeting and they, uh, it was the committee for decorating the, uh, the meeting house for Christmas. And uh, of course they couldn't get through it. Um, and, and unfortunately they couldn't get it, the, the light, the blinking light, they couldn't get it to work. Okay, I mean that, that really couldn't get to work. And then later during meeting, someone stretched a little bit, knocked the blinking, knocked the light down, and it started blinking right in the middle of meeting. So, uh, yeah, and and then after that, the light worked. It, it would blink just a gift to be simple, you know, <laughs> off and on. So this is why you should all come to yearly meeting. You get the best Quaker humor. Um, that, no, that was actually that was actually monthly meeting. That was our our uh, oh, what, a Christmas, right? Our our our, our variety show. Yeah, nice. the young friends had done a skit. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I my my the, the, my favorite part was uh, um. I forget which one of the, I guess it must have been um, the older czar's daughter. Now her name's slipping my mind, but uh, but uh, she. Uh, she did a great job of just having a conniption over all the implications of, 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 of this light and, and what it was going to do to the environment. And, and you mean Bernadette, Bernadette Bernadette, Zars. Bernadette, 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 yeah. Bernadette, yeah. Uh, she, she did a great job of, of mirroring that, yeah. Back when I was a Presbyterian, I heard a joke about uh, Presbyterians I think Quakers can identify with. Um, how do you know uh, um, what the, the definition of, of uh, um, or Presbyterian is? When two or more are gathered together, they form a committee. Wow, wow, yeah. Um, I, Could you repeat the punchline, please? I didn't hear the punchline. When uh, the definition of a, of a uh, Presbyterian, when two or more are uh, excuse me, when two or more are uh, are gathered together, they form a committee. <laughs> so there, this is a joke about Lutherans from the far far north of the U.S. You know, it's more of a cultural joke. It says, "Why do Lutherans love to shake hands?" whenever they meet, even if they're friends. Uh, and he says, because that keeps them at six feet apart, they don't have to actually make contact, so. That's a joke about Minnesotans. Yeah, I've, I've heard that said about Nor <laughs> Norwegians in particular, and yeah. Lutherans as well, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Thank <sighs> you. 
when I joined the House and Grounds Committee back in the 80s, um, we, the committee was trying to decide whether or not to put in a modem in the, in the meeting house. Um, and we, we found that we couldn't do that because uh, we had a dial protocol for our telephone system. Even though we had push button phones, we had a dial protocol. Uh, and we needed to change to push button protocol. I'm sure they have technical names, but I don't know what they are. Um, and and someone asked, well, why haven't we done that already? And, and uh, someone else said, well, we, we tried presenting it to business uh, uh, meeting, but they rejected it. They said the dial, dial protocol is fine. We don't need push button protocol. And Bob Gaines <clears throat> said, uh, well, this is not a matter for business meeting to consider. This is something we can do in our, on our own. Uh, and we did. And we never got any pushback from business meeting about it. <clears throat> we changed to dial protocol. <clears throat> you just let the cat out of the bag. I'm sorry, to push button. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I suppose, I suppose they, uh, we could bring that up at the next, uh, next business meeting and, but it's somewhat moot now that we don't have that same building anymore. <clears throat> I'm afraid that's giving people ideas, Larry. I don't want to cut off the jokes or anything, but uh, <clears throat> it sounds like people are coping pretty well. I would be curious to know uh, if anyone would like to share. Um, I'm sure we all have moments when we say, oh my gosh, how much longer is this going to go on? Can I, can I deal with this anymore? Uh, what, what do you do when that moment comes, if, if it comes to you? Do you look up jokes? Do you <laughs> talk to a friend? What, what do you do? I've been reading um, a book by Eckhart Tolle that came out a long time ago called The Power of Now. And uh, I read that book to calm myself and I recommend it. Um, just about accepting the present moment and um, trying to be very aware of anything you might be doing at the present moment and really focusing on it. So that's been helping me personally. Thanks. Well, I have found what's helped me more than anything else is music. Uh, listening to it, playing it, practicing it, uh, all, all of the above. And, you know, it's really what's helped me survive doing these and uh, doing these song circles and so on. So I've, I've been writing this novel. Uh, and this is the copy edited form of it. And I'm undoing the dog's breakfast that the copy editor did to the, the novel. And, uh, Gosh, I don't know what I'll do after that. Another uh, novel. One thing you can do, I've been reading his novel, and I, I, I can, uh, oh no, that's a different book, isn't it, Larry? Yeah, I, I, I have, I've had to write two books. So we could write a third one. Hannah, oh. Hello. 
Hannah, did you have something? No, okay. The thing I was, I've experimented with this last week of Thanksgiving is I just stopped using any news or information feed that involves scrolling at all. Um, so I just I like deleted Facebook and read it in New York Times even. I'm just <laughs> not going to do anything that lets me like refresh and scroll. Um, so um, yeah, it's actually, it's been great. I don't know. I just, I take in less news, but I honestly, I can just think about it and I don't know. I'll see how long I can resist and keep that at bay. But uh, I have them deleted from my phones for right now. So we'll see in a few months if I can maintain that. That's very wise. The auto scrolling, the worst. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I just do need to um, holler and cry. And I think that's okay. Um, it's helpful if somebody's around and they don't take it as personally <laughs> um, hollering at them or crying because of them. But, um, but I think that that's really, you know, a breakdown every once in a while. The last time it happened, I felt so much better after, <laughs> afterwards. So. Family. Well, according to my clock, which may not be right, uh, it's 1050. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for sharing all your good jokes. It's wonderful just to have a, a lighthearted moment together. So I, I guess we should prepare for meeting. Do you have an announcement that you want to make, James, about next week or anything? Uh, nope. I should look at my calendar and figure out what it, the next week's forum is so I can, I'll announce it after meeting for worship. Okay, great. Yeah, and thank you, Karen Council, for, for leading this. This is really wonderful.